Well, hello there again. So I've had to call Bella because she didn't come on her own, but she's here, and we're going to say a few words to y'all because I just love talking to you. I'm going to thank all you subscribers. God bless you. Thank you for subscribing. It amazes me, but I'm so happy with you. But I was looking here on my phone. God's word for you today is, but you are a chosen generation, a loyal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that is First Peter 2, 9. He has called us out into his marvelous light, and his light is a path to our feet. Look at this cat. She is feeling good this morning, and I'm so glad because yesterday she went out, and we couldn't hardly get her back in. Now, I just showed a short on this tree, that dangerous tree that James had to cut at one of his rental properties yesterday. He had a man do it. And this man that cut this tree is 70 years old, and he's... We call him Long Legs because he dances at the bluegrass. Uh, when we go, you know, when the fast music comes, David can kick a leg. And I did show David dancing on one of my little vid videos of bluegrass. So you might look at it. Check it out. Watch that. He's 70, and he this tree was so tall, and he just goes right up there, and he's got big old saws this long, and... He just cuts that tree down. And then what he does, he cuts it into sections. And James and his men, they, big old logs, I mean, it's this big around. They roll, they can't lift it, it's too heavy. And they take it to earth first, where they grind it up and make stuff out of it. I don't know what they do with it. But that's the only place you can get rid of big pieces like that. Now, the smaller pieces he will put out, and if people want wood for their fireplaces or their camping he has it and they can have it for free so if you want to come get some that's going to be planting one of those pieces of that those logs can run as high as 200 300 pounds but what they do is james has a, a, a thing where he can roll it he puts it on a thing and he rolls it up into the i call them wagons there's, he calls them something else, but they're wagons to me. <laughs> but he rolls them up, and then they take them and get them ground up. And I think they make fertilizer. I don't know what they do with them. And they get rid of it, and you have to pay to get rid of it. So he's doing that today. Or maybe he's going to do it tomorrow. I can't keep up with that man. I could check on him. You know, my phone will follow him right like this, and I can look. And see where he's at. See if he's doing that today. That is so much fun to just know where James is and what he's doing. So I can put James locating. And he's over there somewhere. I don't know. He's on Fair Street, wherever that is. But I can track him around where he's going. And I know when he's coming home. So I decided to be red today. But I'm going out and see what all I can find what's going on got things to do and places to be. You know, I took my Lincoln yesterday. It had a low tar, and I took it to Walmart, and it, they said it only had, this was a couple of days ago, they said it's only got 15 pounds in it. So I said, well, I'll take it to my mechanic across the street that lives right across the street from me, Caddy Cornered, and he is so good. So I, I've known him since he was two years old. His dad ran the mechanic. You know, he was a mechanic, and then he trained... David, and David takes care of everything that me and James need done on our cars, and he's reasonable, and he's honest. He's a good Christian, and he's a good Republican. He, we have the same uh, things about, I tell you what, I'm Trump all the way because I've been watching Hannity, and he's been showing some things about Kamala Harris. She changes her mind, wishy-washy, wishy-washy. Now, I'm a little wishy-washy, but when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. I don't change my mind that fast. 
women can change their mind fast. And that's what Kamala's been doing, and that's not a good thing. We don't need a woman president. They're too wishy-washy. We need a steadfast man that will really put a wall up and vet those people that are coming into America. And, well, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but, you know, that's my opinion. And Grandma don't have any trouble spending her opinion. Come back here, Bella. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Come here. So anyway, David David feels like we do, that things are, that America is in bad shape. I mean, look at groceries. Look at Jiffy Mix. The prices went up on that so much and so many things. And she says she's going to bring them back down. Well, I doubt it. Once you, once those people start making that kind of money, they want to keep on making it. And a lot of the packages, like they say, are a different size. They're smaller. I'm looking for me some earrings to put on. I got some right here. These are cute. They'll go good. They'll go good. Because if I'm going out running around, I got to look neat. There. I like that. I can see myself there when I'm talking to y'all. And I told you how I got started doing YouTube, didn't I? Well, anyway, what happened was one day, I'll re just repeat it. I was sitting here looking into my big iPad. This is my little iPad that I'm recording on right now. And here's my phone. I just love electronics. I went with the flow. Anyhow, I was sitting like this with my big iPad. Now, this is handy. I got this little bag here at the Dollar Tree, Dollar and a Quarter Tree. And I, and this pad has a elastic thing on it. So I hooked that on it. And you can put things in it. See, it zips open. And this is when I want to take a nap. We'll hold my hearing aids. See that? That neat? Snap shut. And when I take a nap, I take my hearing aids out. But I'm wearing them this morning because I'm going out looking around. And I'm taking this with me. This, my dear, is a thing that you can put your phone in right like this and take pictures. Aha! You can do it like this. It's a selfie stick. And I believe it's going to be a good one because I'm going to take some pictures with it. See where I go today? I might just hold this up and, and see what's nice about it is once you get it turned on, let me see. I'm playing with it. Maybe we'll all learn something. Who knows? Let me see. I'm going to put the camera on and turn it turn it toward me. Now, see? There I am. And I can turn around and show you all my house. And I can turn it around this way and get the rest. See my pretty pictures up there? See my pretty painting I did? I did not do those pictures. That's just some I love that I bought at a yard sale. They're vintage. I hope that's showing them good. And then here's my background and my lamps. And I can just do all kinds of stuff with that. That's going to be fun. I'll take it with me. And I haven't had it long. And I'm going to have fun. You know God is good. And I just thank him for my life. Oh, yeah. I was going to tell you. So, you know, grandmas get a little forgetful. I had this iPad. And I was looking at it. And, you know, it was on my lap. So I said, I believe I'll take a selfie. So I was looking and I said, you know, you don't look too bad to be 90. Then I said, I believe I'll talk a little while. So I started talking a little while, by telling about my life, how I go to Walmart and, and all these and how the Lord built the Walmart down the road from me. They was going to build it way out the road. And it's only like three blocks or four blocks from my house. And that's wonderful. And then there's an Aldi's right down the road, the same way, and there was a Kroger, but they moved it over closer to Slate Run, so I got a Kroger over there, and I, and then Myers isn't too far either, so I like living here, and I like where they put the Walmart. I get out there early before the crowd, and the crowd comes, but I'll tell you what, the fun thing to do is go to Corden, to the Walmart. It's a really big one, and it has got stuff. And they carry so much stuff, you have quite a selection. Well, today, 
I've got to check Tractor Supply and see if they have those shots for the kitty cats that I don't have to take them to the vet. I always gave my own shots when I was raising poodles. You know, I raised poodles for about 20 years. Or did I tell you all about that? I'll have to tell you about how I raised poodles one time. I had four little studs, that's male dogs, and 12 little females. Those are bitches. That's what they call them. But I had 12 little females and they were the toys. And the, some of them were kind of miniature, which miniature is a little bit bigger. So I had a bunch of them and I raised toy poodles and sold them. Paid good. I've always, like I said, tried to make money at home. And that, how I got into poodle grooming was a complete freak. That's the way I get into a lot of things. I don't know, it just kind of happens. You understand? It just happens. So I didn't know that poodles had to be groomed. I didn't know when they get about eight months old, if you don't cut their hair off, it mats up and you can't even get it off. I have groomed, and then I got into grooming because I said, when I called them up to get my dog groomed and they said $12, well, I said, I don't think so. So I went and bought me a pair of clippers and from Sears and Roebuck and they wouldn't cut crap. I mean, they wouldn't cut, they, I guess they'd cut human hair, but they would not cut poodle hair. So I had to find out that you've got to buy, buy a real good pair of clippers, which runs $125 at that time. And I went to the library and I got me a book that told you how to groom dogs. And I had to take it back. So I went to the bookstore where you can go and I bought me a book on how to groom dogs. Well, I practiced on my own dog a few times, and then I ran me an ad in the Tribune paper that we have here. And I said, I can shave a dog down for $10 and be ahead. And I did it. They, they, I, I was babysitting at that time, and I didn't have time to groom. So I told all my mothers, I'm sorry, but I'm going to be grooming dogs. And I gave them all plenty of time to get them somebody to keep their kids and I went into full dog grooming and you know what that was a good thing because I could make I could make much more money grooming dogs and buying more groceries than I could babysitting which only paid $15 a week each kid and you fed them I don't remember what years that was but I think back in the 70s and I kept four is all I kept and I had permission uh, you know I had my papers for to keep those many kids and they were good little kids and I loved them but they went elsewhere you do what you got to do kiddo in this life and it ain't always fun but my mothers were good because I did that for a few years before I got into grooming dogs but that's where the money was. And then Kim learned how to groom, baby daughter. And she, I sent her to beauty school. You know, she was about 15 or 16. And I thought, she'll make a good beautician. She went, I, you had to pay $600. So I paid my money ahead of time. And I paid it for her to go. And after about three weeks, she said, this ain't what I want to do the rest of my life. I said, well, you're going to have to think something else you want to do, and we'll work on it. So one day I said, well, would you want to shave this dog down for me? I've got more than I can handle almost, and I had another table and another pair of clippers. So she did it, and I said, well, you can have the money for that one. She was hooked. So she did that. That was her career. And when her and Bruce got married and moved to the country, uh, she set up her grooming shop. And she did that for years, and she never worked out of the house, amount to anything. She did her dog grooming, and that was her career. And she's retired now, and she's been retired with chickens and turkeys and dogs. She don't raise dogs, but she raises chickens, and I get free eggs, and I've got to get busy and go do some stuff. I get to talking, and don't shut up, but I go from one thing to another. But that's how I got on YouTube. Some people saw me, and I talk about the Lord Jesus and how he blesses my life and has 
for many, many years, and I could not do be without the Lord. And my daughter Karen had her knee surgery yesterday, and she put on chat this morning, pray for me, I am in such pain from the surgery. So we, me and uh, James, uh, agreed in prayer for her, and uh, so we pray she's doing better, and I think she is, because you know God answers prayer. There's no distance in prayer. And when two agree together, that really helps. You're in unity. And of course, she was praying too, and she said, she says, we know the great healer. So she's gonna be fine, but there is some pain involved. And of course she said, I'm taking my Tylenol, my Oxy, or something or other, Oxycontin or something. I think she's on a dope pill. But when you have such pain, you're gonna take it. Let me see what she said. I'm looking. I got all this stuff right here. Yep, she's, she's on something and she's doing better. So that's good. And I'm gonna go running. And you know when I say I'm gonna go running. I, oh, David fixed my car, my tire that was down to 15 pounds that I took to the Walmart. My uh, mechanic, he does everything, but I took it over and of course, he's such a sweet young man. He's, he's about 55 or 60 now. But he said, well, no charge. I said, no charge? He said, well, you just had a nail in it and I pulled it out and fixed it. Didn't amount to anything. So I told James, I said, boy, that's a good price. <laughs> but we, we, he does everything for us and we're just, he's like family. So we love him very much. He's a wonderful mechanic and I recommend him to everybody, but he stays so busy. He'll have five or six cars parked waiting to get worked on. And I can see him right across the street. I am so blessed. So anyway, God bless you. Have a great, great, blessed day. And I love you, Uncle B. I know Norman and B are watching my... See, I have faithful brothers that watch these all the way through. And when Norman's wife and her used to come visit us, and Karen and Kathy, the twins, about three or four years old, they would say, we love you, Uncle Norman and Uncle B. And they called her Uncle B. And I still think of her as Uncle B sometimes. So hello, Brother Norman and Uncle B and my brother Dennis and his sweet wife, Patricia. Love y'all. I love you faithful ones. Thank you. I know there's a lot of you. And I wish I could see you all. You have my love and my blessings. Walk that path now where the Lord would be pleased with you. Bye-bye. Oh, where's my glasses? I saw them a while ago. Those that I like, what did I do with them? Well, I had them right over here. Ain't that the way it goes? I don't know what I do. What did I do with them? I don't know. Oh, here they are. I really like these. And I like to take these in the car. They are wonderful. So, catch you later. Bye-bye.